What up YouTube, Topaz Ace back for another album review and this one is that I cause affected and I'm giving this one the yellow light here man because it does have its moments as a project man. I did enjoy some of the lyricism, some of the concepts, bunch of things going on here but yet the negatives is it's really more of the same coming from Dreamsville Records man and it's all going directly from J. Cole you dig like you can tell based off of all of these artists that he's surrounding himself with he's really only putting out the music that he likes to put out and that's one of the things why going back to I believe it was 2014 man like four years ago when Kaz and Boss and all of them was signed to Dreamsville for the first time and he started debuting some music I said specifically that this may not be the move because all of these artists are doing the same kinds of music that J. Cole does. Now, how can you try to bring up somebody underneath you and hopefully get them to be successes in the game when they doing the same things that you doing and you're already to the top of the game? Like, wouldn't the fans actually rather wait for you to come out again than give your protégés a legitimate shot to actually become you, you did? Especially while you still in your prime, you still doing music and such, dude? Like, it really doesn't make much business sense. Like, look at video game publishers man like look at EA which stands for electronic arts man like most people remember these people from doing man or from NBA live and stuff like that but they also do FIFA but that's just the sports section they also do like adventure games they also do just everything that the game industry has to offer and that's how you're supposed to run a record label dude it's not supposed to be specifically niche directly to what you as the head of the company does when you're talking about the types of numbers that J. Cole pulls in there's really no other way that they should go except for global and just bring in some R&B, bring in some pop, bring in anybody that you really believe in that you can push. Like how if you look at the defiant ones with Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine, Jimmy Iovine had the top three records of one particular era with death row all the way to nine inch nails you did like this is how you're supposed to run your label but yet J. Cole is more focused in on specifically what he wants to hit and we'll talk based off of some of these lyrics that are being said within her it seems though the relationship is just deeper than music and all that so I'm not denying any of that but Ultimately, this game is business and you need to keep people on your team that's going to continue to push forward and it's sad to say it, but it's been four years and exactly how much bigger has Kaz become since when he first debuted, you dig? Honestly, I'm not seeing it, and especially with this project that he dropped, man. I saw that he was dropping track after track after track, but I wasn't seeing the promotion for it, which he really needs. Like, it seems as though J. Cole is trying to promote these artists the same way that he promotes himself, which is no promotion, just focusing in directly on the core audience that they already have, which it works for Cole. Let's not deny that he goes multiple platinum every time he drops, man. He's one of the biggest acts, but yet not everybody can do that. So hopefully I'm wrong and this project right here does do numbers when it finally does come out, man. But right now, I'm not very optimistic with it because not only is the music not like to a whole nother level that'll put them on, but yet I'm not seeing the promotion to go on top of it. But let's go ahead and break down this album, man, as there's a couple songs off of this that I really did enjoy, like that Hustler story with Kendrick Lamar. Like, I love the production. I love the whole vibe of it, man. And like what he's ultimately talking about here in the first verse is, it's a hustler's song. It's all about people who get up and do their thing. Not necessarily drug dealing, but yet it does go into that specifically. But yet the first verse is more about somebody within your family you know is going to enjoy this song, man. Whether it's your uncle, whether it's your brothers, whether it's your father. Because somebody within your family hustled at one point in time, so they'll listen to this and enjoy it. That was kind of cool. While the second verse, he's pretty much just going into specifics of an individual who came up and hustled their way through, but yet by hustling so hard, they lost the respect of the family who really didn't want to see them grind in that manner, and then on top of it, got sloppy with it 
and then got caught and sent to jail. I definitely like the multiple angles that he's showing us through this song right here, man. That was pretty cool. My next favorite song is that Not A Minute More, where you can perceive this as a back then didn't want me, now I'm hot, now they all on me. But yeah, it got a little bit of a spin, like as it's saying in the Hulk, like this is what you get as he's meaning success and all of that when you pray to God, when you believe in God and all of that, man. But it ultimately is just talking about his own successes and how he built himself up. And it does have moments of balls and such, man, especially like when he said that all of these stories of doctored up, man, because I'm way too sick and all they want is a cure, like a good play on just talking about the doctor patient. Now that Demons and Distractions song was actually kind of cool as the basic concept here is trying to smoke away the stress that you ultimately have in your everyday life and he doesn't want people to bother him, which is straight. But the reason why I really didn't rock with it like that to be one of my favorites is because it's a double layered song. Like, it switches up beats halfway through, man. And to be honest with you, I don't feel as though the production on the back end was as good as the ones on the front end you did. And the back end part just really wasn't as good. And it's something that I've said consistently over the years, man. Like, if you're going to do these types of songs, you have to ensure that every part of it is just as dope. But outside of these songs right here, man, you got a large selection of songs that's all but the same types of songs that Dreamsville has been putting out for a very long time from that Freaky 4-5 to that Proof to that Zendaya even though they all have the moments within there man like how he said off of that Proof how he's not going to give her cat the hat because he's not Dr. Seuss that was a pretty cool play off of the children's book Cat in the Hat by Dr. Seuss but yet it's also a super sexual innuendo right there you did like I like how he did that there and I also like that Zendaya joint man because it's all but J. Cole trying to put cars onto Zendaya through the song and all that, man. And I'm not knocking that one bit because if I was signed to a major record label and I wasn't shining like that yet to get all the chicks that I want, I would try to get J. Cole to be my wingman and put me onto all of the dope chicks out there that'll probably smash him but not look at me. Like, I like those whole thought process and the balls and all of that, man, but these songs were not that great. And that's overall why I'm giving this project, man, a 6 out of 10. Like, I definitely enjoyed a lot of elements to it, but it's not the type of project that's going to catapult cars to a whole nother level. You're getting a lot more of the same that you've heard from not only him, but from Bass and from everybody involved in Dreamsville over time. And I don't see it actually propelling him anywhere else than where he's been for the last four years. But still, definitely go ahead and check it out, man. It's a decent listen. I hope you enjoyed the show. You can follow me at Twitter up there, and you can go to DownloadPads.com, that's down there, to read today's article.